Hello everyone, this is Latasha Blanton from the Real South Africa Travel and Tourism. And you're gonna have the opportunity to travel with Phil Scott to... Sunny South Africa. You guys are gonna have the opportunity to come to Johannesburg and you guys are gonna be coming to Durban. And we're gonna set it up perfectly. It's gonna be like a luxury experience for you guys. At the same time, you're gonna be getting some culture. And of course, you're gonna get an opportunity to talk to Phil, hang out with Phil, and get his views on Africa and South Africa. You're also gonna get an opportunity to explore the lifestyles here that are available in South Africa. And we're gonna do all that for you in an amazing 10 days. We do hope that you go to the website and book because we do look forward to seeing you here. Absolutely, our website is therealsouthafrica.com. Go there, scroll down, you'll see a picture of Phil and just go ahead and book there. So we'll see you here in what we like to call sunny, sunny South, South Africa. Africa. Africans that have lived their whole life in the continent of Africa, maybe with the exception of South Africa, usually say the same thing when they travel abroad or when they go to school to these countries, the Western world or Europe or even Asia. This is what we hear people say quite a lot. They say, I didn't realize that I was black. It might sound crazy for those of you that lived in a majority white country or even in a diverse community. For most Africans, majority of us were raised in a black community. So since all of us are black, there's no point of mentioning that you're black because you all basically look the same, even if the color might vary. You don't get to meet white people or Asians that often, except for maybe on the TV, right? So when they travel, the first thing they realize is the treatment, how you get treated because of the color of your skin or how certain people will move seats in the train because they don't want to sit next to you. So all these experiences shock most Africans that were never exposed maybe to social media. They don't realize what exactly goes on in those countries that people are different from you, right? So this is an experience that we hear from a lot of our brothers and sisters. This girl that I'm going to show you a video of, she goes by the name of Miss Ima on TikTok and she was sharing her experience when she traveled abroad for school and she was basically coerced into acting as a slave even though initially the drama coach never told her the role. Let me show you the clip of her explaining. We'll come back and discuss. But before I want to clarify in the video, she's wearing a mask that's skincare. She's not wearing a black. I recognize I was black the first time I was forced to act as a black slave. I was like one of the five black people in the school and three of us were Nigerian. It was a very horrible experience for me to be one of the few black people in the school to act this part to a majority 99% white audience fear colonial masters or at some point during my education i was in multiple leadership roles i was a prefect i was head of this head of that i was asked to give a speech if there's one thing i know how to do is to talk so i gave a good speech i used to be into public speaking a lot i got a standing ovation for my speech because it was that good but i couldn't also help but feel like people were giving me a standing ovation because they couldn't believe it came from me at the same time but i felt like they were so impressed that it's like oh wow i didn't expect this from her but whatever whatever no no big deal so immediately after the speech is done I'm just like walking about my day, like feeling like Beyonce in it. I just made the whole entire populace of this place stand up for me. Everybody's hailing me, everybody's cheering me like, oh my God, girl, that was so good. I was like, yeah, my moment has arrived. But one thing about colonial masters, they don't take your moment from you. The drama teacher comes up to me and he's like, oh my God, that was so good. Honestly, I was so blown away. Ima, I didn't know you had such a talent in you that please, 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 that I have something for you, you can't say no. I said, ah. There were two other students still beside him, like, oh my God, you can't say no, Ima, you can't say no. I'm like, okay, can I hear the thing? He's like, no, I promise you, it's, a, it's such a good role. Basically, we have the school drama coming up, and I have a role for you. You don't have to audition. You don't have to do nothing. He also had the audacity to say I was perfect for the role. I was like, well, well, given as I'm Beyonce of the institution right now, why not? So on the day of the audition, 
I carry my bag, I go and I sit up there while people are auditioning. I'm not even interested in seeing what they're auditioning. I'm not even interested in the name of the play, thinking obviously I'm going to get the lead role or at least one of the lead roles. So I'm to be begging me to participate like this. He comes, he hands me two sheets of paper and he's like, these are your lines. So I'm like, ah, ah. two sheets of paper for the whole book, the whole drama. After begging me, guys, it turns out that I was the black slave and the only black character in that play. Okay, and you guys wonder why I have like a Patwa accent, sometimes a Bajan accent. It's because I actually had to learn it to play the role because the role was Tichiba from the Crucible. Here's what actually ate me the most. When I was younger, right, I obviously didn't have as much self-awareness as now. And honestly, there's so many times you don't realize you're black, especially as an African, until you go abroad. It's like, obviously I'm black, but nobody ever points out that I'm black here. That was one of the first moments in my life that I felt like I was black. The first moment I recognized I was a black was because I was forced to act as a slave. I was very confused because I knew that this felt weird and it felt wrong. And for me, it was just the way they coerced me into it. They didn't give me full disclosure. They made me agree to the play. And obviously I was younger then. I already agreed. They already started making arrangements for the play. So when he brought me the lines and I'm looking at this and I'm seeing the slave, I'm like, but you guys didn't tell me it was going to be the slave. And he's like, oh, he's so sorry. It was really sensitive. He didn't know how to go about it. But like right now, um, you know, if I back down, you know, the school play is going to be canceled. I'm like, what in the colonial master blackmail is going on here? Like I said, I didn't know how to say no then. But what irked me was just the fact that nobody told me like, oh, this was going to be the part. It's sensitive. We want to act this play. We need your help. Honestly, it was giving me the vibes that if I didn't agree, they would have done blackface. And my friend was even telling me, even the way they were laughing at the black parts like it wasn't funny bro like what was actually funny if i start to unpack some of my experiences as an international student a black student an african student right there'll be no room on this app because we have seen things right character building where and there were so many points at which like i didn't show up for the rehearsal because i just felt so awkward i felt so tested do you know what i mean i felt so tested at that point in time well yeah yeah, colonial master. That's her experience and a lot of people share the exact same experience because they never realized how the world perceived us. And so when they travel and when they go to schools abroad or when they move or when they go for work, that's when reality kicks in and you understand what people in the diaspora have been facing for all these years. But anyways, fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about her experience. I know some people in the comment section were asking her, how come you didn't say no? But clearly she was in school. Clearly she was not at the age that she is right now. And obviously the guy used a tactic on her so that she feels like she has to do this because the show will get canceled. Basically, they played a psychological trick on her. And unfortunately, she fell for it, but she learned from it obviously. Anyways fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about her story. I am Ongil Zalalem. I'll see you on the next one.